and she says high value men are overrated. Let me get the girl's name because I want to give her some credit uh, for reviewing this video. But I seen the title one and I seen like a quick clip of it. And I said I wanted to react to it. But the name of her. I just want to make sure I get it correctly. Ah, I don't know if it's on that account or on this account. Her name is Jasmine Theodora. Jasmine with a Y, J-A-S-M-Y-N-E, Theodora. And the name of her video is called High Value Men Are Overrated. Y'all ready to get into the video? Let me switch myself around real quick. Uh, bam. All right. So I just want to get her. I want to see what she's thinking. I want to see what her perspective is. I'm interested in seeing, you know, how it is that she thinks about it. Apparently, she's married, so that also adds into the conversation. Uh, and she said that she married average. All right, make sure I hit a like for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notifications. In the femininity space online, the buzzwords high value man and high value woman are tossed around a lot. We tend to value what men find attractive because we know that we need to embody at least some of those things in order to attract an attractive quality man and maintain a healthy marriage. I receive tons of comments from women who say that we shouldn't care about what men find attractive and they'll literally say, and I quote, you're focusing on all this femininity stuff but your husband will still cheat on you and I bet I could get him to cheat on you. Firstly, I always think project much and then I think, okay, we'll come back to me in 30 years and tell me how that worked out for you and then I promptly delete the comment. <laughs> so I completely understand why this community emphasizes being the first i can also understand why she titled it high value men is overrated because it's really good clickbait um and it got me to click on the video so she's a good content creator but then she had on the cover of it i married average and she's explaining why more women need to marry average versus shooting for the thing that i identified last week the, the Derek jackson's that probably is not going to work out for you so i'm probably i'm assuming that i'm going to agree with this more than i disagree of high value but i actually think pursuing high value men is overrated people of course have different definitions of high value man but the most prevalent definition i see online is a guy just being an above average earner with a high status that's essentially how kevin samuels may god have mercy on his soul and the red pill manosphere collective talk about high value men and She's such a nice woman, even when she's uh, uh, identifying or describing something that these other hyenas would identify uh, as a negative thing. She just respectfully, I could see why she's married. I could see why she's married. In fact, Kevin Samuels had six specific factors that he used to qualify a man as high value. If you're a high value man, then you, according to him, have to, one, make at least $120,000 a year, two, for well, first of all, um, that's one thing that me and Kevin Samuels disagreed with uh, offline was I felt like that number should have been more like $250,000 adjusting for inflation um, and the fact that these guys often at times would have families of more than one or two children. Uh, so I think that that number should be more like $250,000, but we're going to roll with her stats for right now. At least the past three to five years. Another part of this conversation that people don't include is because people say, I need me a six figure guy. And the one qualification that Kevin Samuels added into this conversation was six figures for how long, though? Because you being able to maintain that then would justify you qualifying for being considered high value instead of you just made six figures last year or a couple of years. Because then your overtime run out or it's a recession and you're not making six figures no more. But again, I still think that number should have been $250,000. But having it for at least three to five years, we agreed on. Three, have group acceptance from other high value men. Four, network with other high value men. Five, have the reputation as a high value man, meaning having your income and public image linked. And six, have utility, meaning that you're useful to others. Being a high value man in this vein has very little to do with character. If a man makes a lot of money, what that essentially signals is, unless he's a nepo baby, is that he's competent, he's disciplined, he's a hard worker. And those are all, of course, 
valuable traits, I am not here at all to say that you should want a man who's incompetent, undisciplined, and lazy, and makes no money at all. What I am saying is that if you are an average young woman in your 20s or 30s and are looking for men in the same age group. But here was here, the key word is what she says, if you're an average young woman, if you're an average young woman, meaning that you probably don't qualify for that type of man in the first place, and that's why most women have passed up on the men that they already probably should have married because they are average also, okay? Character has nothing to do with being high value. High value is based off of how society assesses you, how you're viewed from a societal perspective. Elon Musk can be an asshole, but nobody is ever going to tell me that he's not one of the most valuable people on earth, especially with regard to the value that he adds into other people's lives, what it is that he does for a living, uh, being an inventor, transformative, uh, voice and, and I mean, I could just go on and on and on, but Elon Musk's value is not necessarily tied to how many kids he have, for example, right? So, um, character has nothing to do with it, but it doesn't stop women from wanting these type of men anyway. There is an infinitesimally small chance that you're going to find a man in your age group who makes six figures, let alone a wholesome man who wants to be monogamous who makes six figures. The average 25-year-old man in the US, at least, makes $40,000 a year. The average 35-year-old makes $60,000 a year, and this is probably before taxes. Only about 10% of men in the US, at least, make six figures, 10%. And you better believe that most of those men are not that young. It takes time to get that kind of income. They're probably at least 45 years old, if not in their 50s. And unless you want to have a pretty large age gap marriage, I'm talking 10 to 20 years, which most people don't want because they want to experience all this different. Most people today want the guy that's already ready made, but they want this guy that's 21, 22, 23 years old to already be making $150,000 a year. It's completely unrealistic. So she's 100% right so far. Seasons of life together, then you should probably consider more regular so-called average men. I see a lot of women online pining after the top, not even 10% of male earners, but the top 5%, men who make at least $200,000 a year. Women who think that being with a regular dude is settling and complacent. I am not that She is 100% right. The culture that we live in, I'm not even gonna say the culture that we live in. A woman's inherent nature is to get the best available possible. The problem with that, because that's just her nature, that's hypergamy, right? The problem with that is that they're not realistic with what it is that they can actually get. So what you want versus what you qualify for is a completely different conversation. And that's the one caveat that's being left out of this. Saying that money is an awful thing. I'm not saying every high earning man is unwholesome. However, if money is the main focus or the highest goal, then it becomes disordered. If you're a young woman who wants to get married, start a family while you're still young, and you want a man who's also young, then you should not base your standards off of what the red pill manosphere collective call high value. There is no mention of character, no mention of piety, and if you do not take those things into consideration, then there will definitely be pitfalls. Firstly, when you're with this kind of powerful man, there's a higher risk that he's going to be unfaithful as he may have a bigger ego and there's no shortage of beautiful women who actively want to be with him for the same reasons. And Now, this is where she goes off the rails. And again, this is my first time watching it. And a reason why she go off the rails is because she thinks that money is tied to cheating and it's not. Anybody that's ever been in these streets, anybody that's ever talked to anybody that's been in these streets, ladies, talk to your homegirl, fellas, you know who you are, and as well as your homeboys. Know that cheating knows no boundaries, especially from a financial perspective. I would say that you're more likely to get cheated on by the guy that's in a plant than you are the guy that's working every day because the work guy that's grinding, that's making $250,000, $500,000, chances is he has no time. I'm going to be absolutely honest with you. That is a myth. The guy that is making a half a million to a million dollars a year, that's not an entertainer, right? Because we all tie high value into people that we can see. But it's not based off of people you can see. It's, it's a lot of guys that may not be as visible, but they work 16, 17, 18 hours a day. And it's less likely that got, that guy is cheating than the guy that makes 60, 70, and $80,000 a year that's in a plan all day. 
He got a plant girlfriend. I knew dudes that was in the plant that had whole other families, fam. That's whole other families. The one caveat, the one thing that I can identify that she's wrong about is that high value men cheat more. It's not true. I would even advocate against that, right? And I would say that, and I don't have any data to back this up. This is just my own life experiences and the different people that I've had conversations with, coaching calls and so on and so forth, that high value men cheat less. The problem with this conversation is that we think cheating is tied to relationships. It's not. Cheating is tied to marriage. High value men that are successfully married, families last longer, and they cheat less. I would even say that the woman is more likely to cheat because the guy works so much. That's a high value man. Becoming a high value man is actually probably worse for the guy because he has more to lose and he doesn't have as much time to be able to spend with you in a family. But cheating knows no bounds. It doesn't matter how much money you got. It don't matter what kind of relationship that you in. I would say that guys that don't have money cheat. Guys that got a little bit of money cheat. Guys that's doing okay cheat. And guys that have a lot of money cheat. But then it's guys that don't cheat that fit all of those categories also. But it doesn't mean that because you're a high value man that you're more likely to cheat. I think it's you're less likely to cheat. That's just my personal opinion though. When a worldly man has beautiful women throwing themselves at him, being faithful to one woman is- And just because you look like you got money also don't mean that you got money. So what we identify in as high value is not based off of how you perceive it to be either difficult and less enticing. I'm not saying these beautiful women are causing men to sin. When you sin, it is entirely your fault. But there are more temptations surrounding high value men, which is why men in the Manosphere and Red Pill Collective weirdly try to reason that it's not unethical for a high value man to cheat or to have a high body count. I'm not saying most high value men cheat, but there is a higher proportion of them cheating. So even if you do want to attract this kind of man, there is competition. And even if you do settle down with this type of man, you very well may not experience as much peace in the marriage because you are keenly aware of the fact that he has many options. The problem with women is that they so busy focusing on what the guy is doing instead of focusing on the value that they bring into the relationship. And so they're looking for somebody to make them feel secure instead of being secure. And the part that we really not having a conversation with, I can't wait till Wednesday because I, I, I think I got some things that I really want to uh, attack from a relationship perspective. The problem is that the guy may get a woman that comes into the relationship and she may look on the outside, fine, but she's bringing trauma that's un, that's not dealt with yet into the relationship. And so she's looking for him to feel secure. That's why you hear a lot of women say things like, I feel like, or you make me feel like, or this and that. Instead of being secure and then adding value, it's very difficult for a woman to add value when she's not feeling secure. And a lot of that comes from trauma and things that was there before the guy even came into her life. And so as a result, because she's never dealt with that, she comes into the relationship looking for somebody to complete her. Relationships are 100-100. It's not a 50-50. It's not 60-40. It's not 70-30. It's not 80-20. Relationships are supposed to be 100-100. That means you come into it giving your all based off of the value that you're supposed to add as a man, she comes into it giving her all based off of the value that she adds you know, as a woman. And those insecurities don't play a part in what it is that you do on a daily basis, which then feeds into the time that y'all spending with each other to not be me trying to fix you, but me trying to enjoy you. And people don't understand it about a relationship. I can't wait till Wednesday. We gonna cook up on a Wednesday. Shout out to Marvin. I'm gonna read the super chat shortly who are more or less throwing themselves at him. And that kind of thing would bother even the most secure of women. So does this type of man give you a lavish lifestyle, status, convenience, financial security, and belief in spades? But what about lasting intimacy, peace, or a tight-knit family? And hey, I get it. We are women. We value a man who can provide for us with resources because we're the ones who get pregnant and give birth. And therefore, we want a man who can provide for us so that when we get pregnant, 
point we can focus on being pregnant and being present mothers, but the transient thrill of being with someone of high value and the exclusive material benefits that they can offer you very well may narrow the scope of your vision. This intense attraction ultimately comes from our fallen desire to seek security in the world and not from God. Money is ultimately just a tool to exchange value, a means by which we achieve our goals. And if money is our highest goal in itself, then our life becomes shallow and we forget its meaning. You also may not have as intimate of a marriage with a very high value man. These kinds of men are extremely ambitious and busy. They're total hustlers. I'm not and that's exactly what we're supposed to be. Society has devalued how men are supposed to operate instead of embracing the fact that, how do you think that this country got built? How do you think that things became so easy for people today? It's not because we were sitting on our hands and, and twiddling our thumbs and only working 40 hours a day. It's because we went out and we basically took over because we we embraced our natural inclination to continue to build and be successful and ultimately be gods, right? And so what you see today is women, women looking for men to fulfill them instead of operating out of a sense of duty, which they then can appreciate the man more when he comes home. That's why they say absence makes the heart grow fonder because it gives you an opportunity to miss me. But if I'm sitting up under you every day trying to figure out how I can please you, then that means that we both completely out of our purpose and we can't actually accomplish anything because we're so busy trying to focus on how you can complete me instead of figuring out how it is that we can add value and then they join each other along the journey. So men are supposed to work. Men are supposed to grind. Only talking about celebrities, even doctors, lawyers, and lucrative business owners work around the clock. They are constantly busy and they enjoy being busy. How often are they going to slow down to be present with you and your family? They may view themselves being pillars of the family in only a financial sense. They may think, oh, I'm providing so much for you, that should be enough. When in reality, you are aching for more of a connection and intimacy. Your children are aching for a more present father who isn't always texting clients on his phone or always has to travel for business. Personally, I did not marry a high-value man according to Kevin Samuels. He does not meet all of the criteria for being a high-value man. He's high-value to me, but he does not have it all figured out yet, and that's fine. Most men don't get their stuff together financially. That's the one thing about being a content creator is when you start talking about the other people that's in your life, it can affect them too. And if a woman was sitting there telling me that I wasn't high-value already based off of the standards that's set by Kevin Samuels, that might be a blow to my man's ego. Actually, for a long time, most men earn more as time goes on, but in their mid-20s, most men are not very high earners, and that is okay. It does not mean that they are low quality and that they don't deserve a good woman's attention. I do not want to make it sound like I settled. My husband is very handsome, he's incredibly bright, he's a very hard worker, and he's financially responsible, and he loves me, but he's not an incredibly high earner, and he does not have a high status. In that don't be talking about my money, girl. No, I, I get her. She's using him as an example in order to illustrate her point. I can respect that. Bain, he'd be pejoratively considered just a regular guy by many people. And while I may lack a high status wealthy husband, he still gives me so much. My husband is an avid gardener. He's actually using the backyard space to grow dozens of corn. He has a plethora of vegetables and fr finely pruned fruit trees. He can build just about anything out of wood and whenever something is leaking or broken, he can either fix it himself. He knows exactly where to get a good deal or, or he'll learn how to do it himself. Self. Many high value men are so caught up in the corporate world that they couldn't even mow their own lawn. With this type of modest life. That's cat. I just don't want to. Nor am I interested. I don't want to fix any leaky pipes. I don't want to mow the grass. It's the whole reason why I don't live in houses, but I prefer to live in condos and things like that. Um, I'm not interested in going out and getting no deals. Uh, I just tell my chick to just go and buy it. Listen, whatever it is that we need to get, you just go ahead and take care of that. I'm not tripping off of that. When one of my tenants have a problem, let's say that the the, the wash dishwasher goes out or something like that, order a new one, get that mug up in there and make sure that it get installed. Yo, I have some, um, some uh, what do you call those? Stools. Can I put them together myself? Absolutely. But they got an app for that. It's called TaskRabbit. And TaskRabbit, go ahead and send me that check. 
And I'm going to call somebody else to come in here and do it while I'm in here making more money because my time then becomes more valuable than what I have to spend on in order to put a stool together or um, these fucking chairs that are sitting up here on this counter. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, that's cool. And I'm with her. I'm, I'm with her. I think that more women should, you know what I'm saying, roll with regular guys. But uh, you got to understand what comes along with it. And that's basically what she's telling y'all style you're also not going to be distracted by an excess of material things because of a, an excess of money you'll experience sacrifice by perhaps needing to live more frugally which will help you grow spiritually you'll likely be more grateful for what you do have plus many younger average men are setting themselves up for success later in life and will rise over time i also have a pretty strong inkling that after women get married to rich men and settle into their lifestyle it just becomes typical a lavish lifestyle doesn't seem all that lavish when and it's all you've experienced for such a long time. Keyword, it doesn't seem. Meaning that I get it, ma'am. Listen, you live in frugal. You got your guy. He's a hard worker and he's a gardener. All right. Um, you know not what you talk of. You know not what you talk of. My chick, my daughter, <clears throat> they love this lifestyle. They love the lifestyle. So. If you think that it becomes mundane after a specific amount of time, that just means that you ain't lived it enough because there's never going to be a shortage of talk cars, a shortage of places to travel to, experiences, bags, shopping, whatever, so on and so forth, people to help, philanthropic opportunities, people, opportunities to go out and pay for people's groceries, all that other stuff. Look, man, this is a phenomenal life. Don't let nobody fool you thinking that this ain't a phenomenal life. It is. It's an excellent life it just becomes your new normal and you may end up yearning for the kinds of things you could have had had you focused less on finding a high value man as the manosphere red pill folk define the term and focused more on finding a godly man even if you had to settle for a more modest lifestyle you can be both you can be godly and high value but neither here nor there I am definitely not here to invalidate positive experiences that women have had with high earning men. My ultimate point is that what's truly important in a man is not his status. It's not whether he runs an incredibly lucrative business or whether he earns six figures. What's important is that he's a hard worker, that he can take care of you and perhaps your growing family, that he's repentant and earnestly loves and respects you. I know firsthand. What is this repentant thing? Hmm how attractive lots of money and status is, but that emphatically does not make a good husband. If we remain devoted to worldly things and enslaved to our fallen desires, then we're not too dissimilar to those who completely reject or ignore their femininity. So she's leaning into the whole spiritual aspect of it. Our femininity then becomes a shallow raiment whose only purpose is to live in unappreciated luxury. Even in the Bible it says, No man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and Mammon. Matthew 6.24 Mammon means riches and the worship of them. So while and so, you know, this is why understanding and a Bible also says in everything you do, get understanding. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. Meaning that great things, success, money, phenomenal marriage, uh, character, spirituality, all of those things. Right. It also says that money uh, fixes all things. And money is not bad. It just says the love of money is the root of all evil. OK, so. We have to understand, and if you want to substantiate that argument, you can look at multiple different examples. Some of the richest men, and God loved them the most, um, were God's favorite. You can look at Job. You can look at the story of the talents. You can look at David. You can look at a lot of different stories to emphasize this, and that money is a tool, but your lack of it and the fact that you see people living substandard lives because they don't understand it can be your undoing. As a matter of fact, I would also say that Money is the number one reason why people get divorced. So take that with a grain of salt. She's young, though. She's young. She don't know any better. She a baby. 
though we desire our needs to be met and we need to do our part every day, God comforts us and instructs us, Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not. Neither do they reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. We must also deeply consider why we even seek to be married in the first place. Is it for our own pleasure or for the sake of our salvation and to glorify the Lord? To this end, I recommend seeking pious men who likewise seek God first in all things. But here's the key. You shouldn't be seeking a man in the first place. The Bible also says, he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing. Meaning that you shouldn't be looking at all. And see, this is why you have to be careful. And this is why women, uh, as nice as this young lady is, and I think that she's an incredibly nice person. Uh, this was a great video to be able to react to. And it's the complete opposite of what it is that we used to see from a ratchet perspective. Uh, but the reality is that um, women should not be in a position to give you advice on what it is that you need to be doing, especially if you're a man. Um, they have to be quiet, they have to sit down, and they have to speak on things that's more aligned with what it is that they should be doing instead of what men should be doing. Women should not be chasing and seeking and going to find a husband. They should be waiting and then continuing to build themselves up as wives, waiting on their husband and aligning themselves with people that are equally yoked that would then find them to be a wife. That is what you should be looking for. In the meantime, work on your character, work on your ability to be able to cook, your nurturing abilities, uh, your ability to be peaceful, and your motherly duties, uh, being up under other women that has been successful at it so that you can be successful when and if your husband finds you, all right?